I fell asleep during my two-hour layover in SeaTac. I had my iPhone earphones in with my alarm set, so I was not worried about being able to wake up in time. I had a good nap. As I was sleeping, I started to feel too rested. Like the feeling you get when you know you are getting way more than eight hours of sleep. As my mind slowly came to the realization that I was having this feeling, I remembered where I was and snapped awake. Did I oversleep? Did I miss my flight? Oh shit. But when I woke up, my terminal was empty. The woman who was manning the counter was gone. There were no other passengers at my terminal either. It was just rows of empty chairs with no bags next to them. Looking out the window, it appeared to be pitch black. It was sunset when I went to sleep. I had definitely overslept. Panic started to set in. I had missed my flight. I knew I had to at least go talk to someone at the Alaska Airlines to see if there was any way for me to get home. I got up and looked for the signs pointing which way baggage claim was, as that would lead in the general direction of a help desk. As I walked down the hallway, I noticed something really weird. The shops were all open, but there were no cashiers. The closing screens weren't down or anything. There was just no one in them. As a matter of fact, there was no one walking around either. There was no one anywhere. Was the airport closed? Did I stay in past closing? Do airports even close? I rolled up my coat sleeve and looked at my watch. The screen was blank. It was dead. In a second attempt, I pulled out my iPhone and pressed the power button. Nothing. It was dead too. The power on the digital displays in the hallway was still on, and the time showed 12 even. It didn't say AM or PM though, but it was dark outside so it had to be AM. I couldn't think. This didn't make any sense to me. I kept walking down the hall and decided to call out hello to see if anyone would answer. Nothing. It was completely silent. I came up to a payphone and sure enough, it was dead too. I got to the end of the hallway where there should have been an escalator to baggage claims. There was only a solid floor. The doors to the outside were all locked. I could see a little bit of pavement through the windows, but it was too dark to see any further. The help desk computers, the radios under the desks of the security office, the engine of the trolley car thing that normally drives around the hallway, nothing worked. I wandered around the airport for hours, still stupidly carrying my luggage. I walked until I got thirsty and took a soda from one of the news shops. I left a dollar on the counter. I didn't understand any of this. I tried to break open the glass of my terminal. I hit it with everything I could find. I couldn't even put a scratch on it. I spent days in the airport. Maybe even weeks, months. I don't know. I would wake up, eat whatever I felt like from one of the many shops, and continued walking around the airport by myself. I even went into the Burger King once to try to make myself a burger, but none of the fryers or burners worked. The meat in the refrigerator was still there, but it was warm and smelled a little rotten. When I would sleep in the terminal chairs, I would wake up and whatever I had taken from the shops the day before would be back there where I had taken it from. Every time I woke up, the airport was exactly as I had found it the first day I had woken up there. I didn't keep track of time anymore. I must have been living in the airport for almost a year. I had explored every crevice, every nook, and found no way to get out. Everything I did was reset the next day, and every time I went to sleep, I woke up in the same chair. I decided to kill myself. I cut my wrist open, using the jagged metal on the underside of the machine they used for sorting baggage. 
I sat there laughing on the floor as my blood pooled about me. I think I died. I woke up again in the airport. The same airport. This time, I walked back to where I had killed myself to see if anything remained, any trace that I had ever been there. Nothing. But then I heard something. A sound in the distance, like a piece of pipe falling somewhere. I ran towards it. This was the first time I had ever heard anything else but me in the airport. I came to the corner of the building where there had always been just a slab of marble floor. This time, there was something new. There were escalators. These had never been here before. I seem to remember, a long time ago, that there used to be a tram system in this airport. I had never found it in all my time walking around this version of the airport, but this time, here it was. The escalator started moving as I came within one step of it, as if it was calling me to ride it. I did. I was one floor lower than I had ever been in the airport. I could feel the wind from the tram tunnel and hear it running. I stood there waiting for it to come. I waited. I waited some more. It wasn't coming. I heard the pipe noise again, coming from down the tunnel. I knew what I had to do next. I climbed down onto the track and started walking. I could hear the tram in front of me. I could hear it in back of me as well. Were there two trams? It was getting louder in both directions. I could see the light of the tram in the distance, both behind me and ahead of me. It was blinding. I had to get off the track, but there was nowhere to run. There was a maintenance store ahead. I got to it just in time and pulled with all my might. It wouldn't open. I looked up at the door and saw a little glass window. There was a face looking at me through the window. I backed away from it onto the track. It was still looking at me. I tried to focus on it to see what it was, but the noises from my sides was so deafening it drowned out my thoughts. I looked to my side. It was the brightest thing I had ever seen. It was so bright I recoiled and closed my eyes. I woke up again with a startled scream in the same airport chair I had always woken up in. A little girl screamed back at me and her mother grabbed her. All the people around me were staring at me. A man in the chair to my right got up and walked away a few seats away before sitting down again. I looked at my watch. I guess I was going to make my flight after all.